Um, very good afternoon, everyone. For those of you who may have joined us from different parts of the world, um, yeah, thank you for joining us despite, you know, it may be uh, weird hours. <laughs> All right, um, so some housekeeping items before we start. Today's topic is about design of casting anchor channels according to AS5216. Um, feel free to use the chat function or ask your questions in the Q&A um, yeah, tab. This session is currently being recorded and it will be made available on the AFAC website. PDF slides will also be made available after this session and you will receive follow up email for feedback and we appreciate that you know if you can let us know um, what you think we can do better next time. And also if you have any specific topic of interest, feel free to let us know as well. We'll try to incorporate that in the next webinar that we plan. All right, um, again, a quick, I guess, recap. Um, there are three critical elements to ensure quality assurance for anchors. Number one, we only say that the anchor must first be pre-qualified which means it has to be independently tested and assessed to be fit for its intended purposes. So for example, anchors that are used for seismic application must undergo a separate type of testing in cracked concrete to meet the requirements. And number two, this is what um, I guess this webinar is about and AS5216 is about providing a robust design to ensure all failure modes are considered and the critical failure mode is being designed for. And last but not least, installation, which tends to be the weak link in all of all three of them, um, where many failures in the past have occurred um, due to improper installation or poor installation practices. A brief introduction about AFAC. So AFAC is a non-for-profit industry initiative founded in 2012 by Swinburne Universities and six other industry partners, namely the Vault, Hilti, Hobson, Leviat, Ramset and Wurf, to introduce governance to the anchor industry based on the three critical elements for quality assurance of anchors that we have just discussed. Prior to the formation of AFAC, the industry was fragmented. There was no uniformity or consistency in terms of anchors pre-qualification, specification and design. Um, AFAC has since grown and there are now 13 industry members um, contributing to the work by AFAC. Um, so the team um, at AFAC, so mainly um, me, Tilak, Anita, who's here, we are all um, Swinburne University staff members. So AFAC contributes to various sectors in the anchor industry to uplift safety, quality and efficiency. So as you can see, we service um, different, I guess, practitioners. Um, so we provide guidelines for design and specification of anchors for designers, training and certification for installers of anchors. Um, AFAC also provides guidelines for field testing of anchors and guidance on the minimum performance required for anchors in safety critical applications. And obviously at Swinburne, um, we undertake a lot of research and development work uh, in areas such as anchor performance in early age concrete, seismic and other types of innovative concrete. So we always say that the best anchor product in the world um, it's only as good as its installation. If an anchor is not installed properly, there's um, no chance for it to perform as it's supposed um, to do. So the AFAC installer certification program um, is based on uh, best practice to train and assess installers competency in installing post installed anchors according to the manufacturer's installation instructions. This program has been referenced in various Australian standards and road authority specifications, such as Vic Road Section 680 and also TMR specifications. Now, for safety critical applications, it is recommended for engineers to specify that the anchors should be installed by a competent installer under appropriate supervision. 
Once again, without proper insulation, the anchor will not function as intended, which may lead to premature anchor failure. So AFAC instigated the development of TS-101 in 2015, which was the first deemed to satisfy guidelines for design of anchors in concrete. This was further developed to, into a full Australian standard in 2018. And now our topic of interest this afternoon as well is the new version um, in 2021, um, which covers four new topics, namely seismic actions, anchor channel in three-dimensional loading, which is the topic this afternoon, post installed rebar and redundant non-structural fastening was covered in previous webinars. So if you have missed any of our previous webinars, please feel free um, to access them on the AFAC website. All right, now um, one last item from me. AFAC has many um, technical notes free for download on our website, so feel free to um, access them and make good use of them. Without further ado, I'd like to pass on to Tilak. Tilak, please introduce yourself. Thank you. Uh, good day, everyone. Uh, thank you, Jesse. Uh, I am Tilak. I'm the National Technical Manager for Australian Engineer Fastmas and Anchors Council. So this is the third webinar in the series of what's new on AS5216. In last uh, two seminars, we covered about seismic design of fastness. We talked about post install and forcing wire connection and redundant non-structural fastenings. So this is the third seminar, and we'll be covering another very important addition to the uh, old, uh, uh, the 2018 version of AS5216. So in this uh, seminar, I'll be introducing anchor channel, what are anchor channels and why they are used for and where they can be used. And then I'll talk about what we have changed in the 2021 edition of AS5216. And then I'll briefly talk about the three critical elements that she just mentioned. I'll be uh, briefly touching on the pre-qualification requirement of anchor channel. And I'll spend quite a lot of time in the design of anchor channel, including how we calculate the forces mm -hmm. and how do we design anchor channel for different loading conditions and different possible pillar modes. And finally, talk a little bit on the installation of anchor channels to close the loop. And I will finish my presentation. Uh, by comparing our Australian uh, anchor channel design method with some other uh, international design method. I uh, will be using these two icons or these photos uh, throughout the slides if relevant. The first one, the red one, 2021, uh, I will be using that uh, photo if the requirement was there in 2018 version. And if the information is new in 2021, I'll be using the green icon in the top, uh, sorry, lower uh, bottom right corner of your slide as you can see the blinking icons there. So I'll start with the very basic definition of anchor channel. Uh, this definition is taken from the Australian standard AS5216 itself. The anchor channel is covered in 2018 and 2021. So you can see 2021 and 2018 icon on the lower right corner. So anchor channel, anchor channel is defined as a fastness made of profile steel element with at least two anchor channel connected to the channel profile. So the connection needs to be a rigid connection. An anchor, so anchor is the headed component that is connected uh, to the channel profile. So AS5216 uses terminology fastness for the uh, post-installed uh, mechanical or chemical fastness. For example, we call expansion fastness uh, or bonded fastness or chemical fastness. In AS5216, anchor is only used uh, to denote the headed component of anchor channel. In the anchor channel, there is one additional component, which is channel bolt, or sometimes it's called T-bolt. And this is the uh, special kind of uh, bolt, which is in T-shape generally. And this is specifically designed for the channel profile. And this is used to connect the fixer or any connecting element uh, to the anchor channel. Um, some direction we use uh, X and Y direction. This is specifically for 2021 edition of AS5216. There are possibly three failure modes. One is tension. I'll go into a bit detail about this one. And there are two shear forces, VY and VX. 
X denotes the direction along the longitudinal axis of the anchor channel, and Y denotes the direction perpendicular to the anchor channel, not uh, the tensile one. It's the shear force perpendicular to the anchor channel and shear force along the longitudinal direction of anchor channel. Okay, let's uh, look at the detailed uh, definition or detailed look at the anchor channel. This anchor channel are C shape. I have an anchor channel with me. This looks like this one, it has a, some C shape. The shape actually configuration depends on the manufacturer to manufacturers. It could be perfect C shape or sometimes V shape and U shape. I have put two figure on the right screen. Uh, you can see the first one is from the Leviat and the bottom one from the Hilti. And the uh, cross section of the profile looks slightly different, but the working mechanism, working principle is exactly the same. So it needs to have at least two anchors. If you have anchor channel with one anchor, that doesn't work. So you need to have at least two anchors and the number of anchor channel is not limited. You can have as long anchor channel as you can. So load is transferred to the headed bolt, uh, headed bolt or you can channel bolt. It looks like this one is T-shaped. That's why we call it T-bolt. Uh, we uh, connect fixer or any uh, connecting element using this T-bolt. We just put it like this and rotate and we engage like this and load is transferred uh, through the uh, channel bolt. This is what uh, you can see in this figure. And the uh, um, anchor channel is available as a hot roll or cold form or it could, can be different uh, finishes. Again, if your requirement is specific, and the manufacturer will have um, different varieties, it is recommended to talk to them. So their dynamic properties and their corrosion uh, resistance or the durability might depend on the rolling process as well as the uh, finishes of the anchor channel. So where do we use anchor channel? The most common application of anchor channels you might have seen is connection, uh, connecting cotton wall or facade uh, to the slab or the uh, concrete buildings. So in this slide, uh, in the left, I don't know, you can see my pointer there or not. The, uh, the facade is connected to the uh, slab or beam, whatever you are connecting onto, using the anchor channel. In this case, the anchor channel is installed parallel to the edge and very close to the edge. Uh, in this case, the facade uh, wall, big facade is connected to the concrete element. As you can see, the connection of anchor channel is at the bottom, or it could be at the side, uh, depending on the uh, designer's preferences or some, some restrictions you might have. Another common application is to connect handrail, uh, fence kind of thing. As you can see on your left photo, the balcony is connected to the building using uh, this sort of uh, configuration in the anchor channel. The figure on the right is the, uh, the connection of seats in the stadium. So as you can see there, this, uh, the, the groove and the middle photo are the anchor channel and we can connect the seats uh, to the anchor channel using uh, channel bolts. Some further application, uh, connection uh, between facade, uh, the precast panel, sorry, and the middle one, the connection of uh, the pipe to the uh, wall or the concrete elements. And the third application here I've shown is the use of anchor channel in tunneling application. As you can see there, there is a load in the longitudinal direction as well as the transfer direction. So far in 2018 version, the longitudinal load transfer was not covered. And I'll be talking about this in detail, which is now covered in 2021 edition of the 5216. So why do we need anchor channel or why do we use anchor channel? Some of the advantages of using anchor channel is they are cast in anchors and they generally perform better because there is a mechanical interlock between steel element and concrete. As you can see there, you have the headed component at the bottom of the uh, channel bolt and the concrete will fill this gap and there will be the direct mechanical interlock there. Given that, the concrete placement or the, the vibration or the uh, concrete is good quality around the anchor, you would have a better performance compared to post install anchors. Another big advantage of using cast in anchor channel is uh, the uh, uh, in the dense kind of reinforcement conditions. As you can see in the figure on your right, if you have a dense reinforcement, it's very difficult to find a space to install the post-install uh, mechanical or chemical anchor. 
So uh, you might try a couple of times to find the empty spaces. And even if you find the empty spaces in a couple of trials, the capacity could be deteriorated if you do not fill these holes uh, completely. So in this case, if you are using anchor channel, so there are casts in anchor, that means you need to place them before you pour the concrete. That means you know where is the empty spaces and where you can uh, put the anchor. So this is a uh, lifesaver in some cases. So if they have lots of advantages, they have some disadvantages as well. So most common disadvantages are the problem with using anchor channel is the problem with the flexibility. So there is some limited flexibility, for example, in lateral direction, longitudinal direction, you can have uh, flexibility. Uh, you can move it in perpendicular direction if you are using the slotted hole or different kind of uh, connection or the fixer profiles, you can have limited flexibility. But compared to post-installed mechanical or chemical fasteners, the, the, the flexibility is very, very less. So you need very good planning in beforehand. If you know what is where to connect, before you pour the concrete, then you can put the cast in anchor channels. But you change your design or if you have to connect something uh, later on, uh, post-install mechanical or chemical fasteners has to be used. We cannot use anchor channel in those, those cases. Jesse talked about the scope of AS5216. The scope is a little bit different for 2018 and 2021 version. Both of those edition covers post-install mechanical anchor as well as post-install chemical anchors or fasteners. And in the casting family, AS5216 2018 and 2021, both uh, covers anchor channel. So what is new in AS5216 2021? So anchor channel might be subjected uh, to three different uh, loading. The tensile loading, shear loading in y direction, in shear loading in the x direction. So if you take this as an example, that could be a tensile loading in this direction, perpendicular direction to the anchor, obviously it's the tensile load. For shear loading, it could be perpendicular to the anchor channel, we call it Y direction, and the shear load in this Y direction is called VY. And there could be another loading possibility along the longitudinal axis of the anchor channel, this is VX. In 2028, sorry, 2018 version, the N and VY was covered, but VX was excluded. So in 2021, what we did was we included pre-qualification and design requirement uh, for the anchor channel if it is subjected to shear load in longitudinal direction of the anchor channel. So 2021 is the complete single document that covers all possible loading scenario. So what is different in longitudinal direction? As you can see there, if there is a smooth interface, there is no resistance in the movement of the anchor channel or channel bolt in this direction. There is only friction, okay? If the friction, the, the, the load is higher than the frictional resistance, there would be a slip between the channel bolt and channel profile, and you would end up like this. And to prevent that slip, uh, to transfer some uh, shear load in the longitudinal directions, you either need nodes or you need the serration, okay? Nodes is used to transfer the smaller load. It will have a nodes in the underside of the channel bolt. I don't know if you can see there or not. There are two nodes in this channel bolt. And there might be some uh, single tooth like this, as you can see in the uh, left figure there. And during the installation procedure, once you apply the torque in this one, this nose will form, this teeth will form a nose in the channel profile, channel lip, and that will prevent the lateral movement and that will help to transfer the load from bolt to the channel. And if you uh, want to transfer higher load, the channel uh, might need to be serrated. The nose might not be enough. So in this case, there will be a serration in the channel lips, underside of the channel lip, and you will use the matching bolt with serration in the underside of the bolt as well. So in summary, if there is a smooth uh, channel bolt and a smooth channel profile, there will be no uh, shear load transfer in the longitudinal direction. And if you want to transfer the smaller load, uh, nodes might be sufficient, but if you want to transfer the higher uh, shear load in the longitudinal direction, X direction, you need to have uh, serration in the anchor channel and uh, matching a bolt bolt. Now let's look at the, uh, let's move on to the design component. And before that, let's talk about the determination of forces. 
Uh, I'll not be talking about how to determine forces on the anchor channel. So our my assumption here is we know the forces to be designed. Uh, we know V star C as if you follow the standard. So we know the total tensile load or shear load in the anchor channel, and I'll be talking how we distribute that load to the individual anchor. The first one is the tension because load transfer depends on the load uh, type. It's different for the tensile and shear in perpendicular and shear in longitudinal direction. In the figure in your left, this is the anchor channel in this position with five anchors, anchor one, two, three, two, four, five, and N star CH is given. That is the total uh, design tension load in the anchor channel. And we will be calculating the individual load uh, taken by the individual uh, anchor. So for that, we uh, assume the linear uh, variation of the forces from the load application point from the pos position where N star CH is applied. And we assume that the linear variation along the length Li on both sides. Li depends on the, uh, the spacing of anchor or the flexibility of the anchor channel in uh, this axis, Y axis. So the load transfer to the anchor depend on the height of the triangle, if you'd say. So in this example, anchor uh, one and anchor five are outside that triangular or linear load distribution region. That means there is no forces in those anchors. And you calculate the height uh, at different locations, for example, A2 prime, A3 prime, or A4 prime. And the load to anchor two, three, four depends on the height at that location, which can be seen in the equation on your right. Uh, if load is uh, perpendicular, to the uh, anchor channel or the channel axis, that means a shear load perpendicular to the uh, channel profile, we call it Y axis, and the load distribution is similar in the standard. This is uh, very conservative, I would say, because the load transfer is uh, not only uh, depending on the anchor profile or the stiffness of the anchor, it also depends on the uh, connection between the channel uh, profile uh, to the concrete because the channel profile is bearing on the concrete and this will be helping on uh, untransferring the load and this this component is neglected or this is ignored because that that large depending on the channel profile and the and the other other parameter so to make uh, your life easier the 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 shear transfer component from anchor channel to concrete uh, is uh, ignored in AS 5216 2021. And the load transfer process is a little bit complex if the uh, force is uh, along the direction of longitudinal axis. Okay, the load transfer, uh, uh, the load distribution depends on the uh, location of anchor channel, whether it is uh, close to the S or away from S and also uh, orientation parallel perpendicular to the A's or parallel to the A's. And sometimes it depends on the failure mode as well. So how far, how close? This is, uh, you can see the equation there. If the distance is more than 10 times the effective depth of anchor channel or 60 times the diameter of anchor, we assume that this is away from the A's. So I'll briefly go through each of them. If uh, anchor channel is away from A's and installed parallel to the A's, we distribute a load to all anchors if there are three or less anchors, and we distribute that load equally to three adjacent anchors that will give us unfavorable uh, design conditions. If uh, you have anchor channel installed perpendicular to the edge, again, we distribute load to the all anchors if anchor channel has less or equal to three anchors, and we distribute load to the three uh, adjacent anchors closest to the edge if there are more than uh, three anchors, which will uh, result in the unfavorable design uh, conditions. And if anchor channel is close to the edge, this might be uh, the common common practices if you are using anchor channel to connect facade, because as you saw in the example I showed you, most of the anchor channel were closely uh, close to the edge. And uh, the load distribution again depends on the orientation of the anchor channel. If it's parallel to the edge, again, load distribution depends on different failure mode. Parallel to the edge, concrete edge failure, the load distribution we use in away from edge perpendicular to the edge will apply. 
And if you are considering other failure mode, the load distribution I talked in a couple of slides earlier uh, will be applicable. And if the anchor channel is up, uh, oriented perpendicular to the edge, again, the load distribution depends on the uh, concrete, uh, sorry, failure type. If it's concrete edge failure, we use the load distribution principle we use for the anchor channel away from the edge and perpendicular to the edge. And if it's other failure mode, we use the principle we used before to calculate the distribution where anchor is remote from the edge and installed parallel to the edge. Again, in all those cases, if there are less than three anchors, we apply load to all anchors. And if there are more than three anchors, we distribute load to the three anchors, uh, which produce, uh, which give you the unfavorable design conditions, or they are closer to the edge if it's especially in the perpendicular direction. Now let's look at the pre-qualification. Okay, so far you should know that all the fastness or anchor channel you are designing uh, using AS5216 need to have a pre-qualification report. So if you don't have anchors with pre-qualification report, you cannot use the design principle or you cannot design that anchor channel using AS5216. Because AS5216 relies on some of the values or some of the factor uh, from the test and that has to be reported in pre-qualification report. AS5216 require all the fasteners to be pre-qualified in accordance with EAD33008. This is listed in the Appendix A. So if you look at the last line uh, there, this is the testing requirement and it refers EAD33008. And similar for the uh, uh, reporting requirement as well as uh, the, uh, the evaluation requirement. So uh, this is the very important document if you want to have a look in detail. The anchor channel uh, EAD is available in EOTA website and it is freely available uh, to download for everyone. And you don't need any registration or any login to access those documents. So pre-qualification is the very detailed and very robust process. Uh, we uh, cannot get ETA from the testing we do ourselves or the manufacturer by themselves. So they have to be uh, tested or assessed uh, by some independent uh, parties or in the independent authorities. So it requires hundreds of tests to get this few page document. They need to consider all the variables, all the possible loading conditions, all the, the, the local condition uh, you might encounter, and they'll produce, uh, they'll assess all those test data and report everything in the pre-qualification report. So in the figure, uh, I have some few of the tensile test, uh, some shear test, and some failed specimen after the test. And this one in particular is for the uh, testing on the uh, longitudinal direction. As you can see there, the damage of uh, the, the thread uh, can be seen there, the serration kind of thing. So all possible failure mode will be tested during the pre-qualification testing and the performance of the anchor or the capacity factor, whatever we need for the design is reported in the pre-qualification report. That's why the anchor channel without pre-qualification report cannot be used in the design uh, according to AS5216. So how do we do the design? Okay, once we have an anchor channel with pre-qualification, proper pre-qualification record, and we have the, uh, the the design action, the N, A, or N star, depending on the uh, orientation or the depending on the type of the load, then we design for tensile loading, and we design for shear loading, and we design for uh, the shear in X direction and shear in Y direction. So let's start with the tensile loading. This was there from SATS 101 and it was there in 2018 version and it's there in 2021 version. So there's no change in this edition. As you can see, there's the two icon in the lower right corner there. So if you want to design anchor channel in the tensile loading, you need to calculate the capacity based on the failure mode listed there at least. So there are 10 failure mode listed there and you need to calculate the capacity associated with each failure mode, channel bolt fracture, anchor fracture, connection between anchor and channel, local flexor of channel leaf, flexor of channel, concrete cone failure, pull out failure, and so on. So there is a failure of supplementary reinforcement, steel fracture, and the anchor is failure of supplementary reinforcement, and I put them in a single, single uh, title there. And if you count them, there are 10, okay. I'll briefly go through a couple of 
uh, them uh, except uh, the the pool out reinforcement because AS5216 refers to AS3600 for the design of supplementary reinforcement. And for other filler mode, uh, I have shown you some photos and design verification requirement along with the capacity reduction factor. Uh, all those photos and equations were taken from AS5216 itself. Uh, and the detail uh, formulae to calculate each parameter and the factor is uh, again given in AS5216. First one is the channel bolt failure. This is the failure of this T-bolt in tension. So you get the capacity of the tension bolt. So there is no uh, subscript A. So if you look very carefully there, this N star is the related to the channel uh, bolt. And if there is underscore A, this is related to the anchor channel. Okay, for the channel bolt fracture, we compare the capacity of this uh, factor NRKS. This is the characteristic capacity of steel failure of channel bolt. And you got the capacity reduction factor of phi MS, which is given in the chapter maybe three in the AS5216, and you compare with the demand. Similarly, for the anchor fracture, in this case, the fracture of this, this component, and in this case, you need to compare the capacity of the anchor itself. So there is a subscript A there in the equation. And again, you calculate the characteristics capacity of the steel in anchor failure, and we, we calculate the capacity reduction factor, and then we compare with the capacity. And we use the same principle for all, all the failure mode. <coughs> And this failure mode is for the pull-out failure. Pull-out failure occurs for the bolt, uh, sorry, anchor itself. So there is a subscript NA there. And the capacity reduction factor for the pull-out is 1 on 1.5. This is the longitudinal failure of the channel, sorry, local flexor of channel lip. In these locations uh, there, we, we need to verify that failure mode as well. Failure between the anchor and the channel profile. You need to uh, verify this failure mode and you need to calculate the capacity of this connection as well. And the concrete cone failure, the NRKC, this is the common failure mode. If you're using any anchor, so you should be familiar with NRKC, the concrete cone failure. Uh, the flexor of the channel, this is the uh, the failure of not just the lip, just failure of the, the flexor failure of the channel profile itself. And the concrete blowout failure, if you have the anchor channel located close to the edge, you, this, this thing will uh, have some small concrete breakout failure at the edge you need to verify that failure mode as well. And the, finally, the concrete splitting failure, that means this might split the concrete into two. And uh, you also need to uh, calculate the capacity corresponding to the supplementary reinforcement failure in the fracture as well as pull out. And the smallest of all those uh, capacity would be the tensile design capacity of the fastener. So you need to calculate 10 values and the minimum of those 10 value uh, will be the uh, design capacity in tension. Share loading in Y direction, again, this is there uh, since uh, SATS uh, 101 2015. Uh, it was same in 2018 version, it is still same in 2021 edition. But uh, there are some uh, changes in the, uh, the uh, notation uh, from 2018 to 2021 because there were no X, Y in 2018, but now we call this Y direction and we have added the subscript Y. Uh, in AS 5216 uh, edition, the design principle is exactly the same. Again, you need to calculate the capacity for nine different uh, possible failure mode, and the minimum of them would be the design capacity in a Y direction. So the verification equation requirement is uh, given in this slide. Again, the photos and table is uh, from AS 5216, but slightly modified. Uh, once failure mode again, uh, failure of channel bolt without lever arm, failure of channel bolt with lever arm, failure of uh, anchor channel, failure of uh, the connection, failure of leap, a concrete blowout if it's closed, a concrete pry out failure, and the failure of supplementary reinforcement needs to be considered to calculate the capacities. And this is completely new in uh, AS5216 2021. So the X direction design of anchor channel subjected to the shear load in longitudinal direction of anchor channel. Some of the failure mode are similar to the previous one. Some of them are different. So let's go uh, through them. The table on your left is the verification requirement. Uh, the equation is there. 
and uh, all the detailed methodology to calculate those capacities again given in the AS5216. Uh, failure mode, uh, channel bolt failure with lever arm, without lever arm. Uh, there is the anchor failure. Uh, there's the connection between anchor and lip, connection between um, anchor and the channel profile, the concrete ES failure, pry out failure you need to calculate. Okay, some of the capacity reduction factor are different for X direction and Y direction. Uh, for example, if you see this connection between channel lip and channel bolt, this phi M S L X, and there is a Y uh, for the other uh, direction, the Y direction. So the capacity is different for X and Y direction, and sometimes the, the, the factor might be uh, different for X and Y direction. So you need to uh, consider all of them. So this is for the tensile and shear direction. And if you have a combined tensile and shear loading, you need to verify for the combined loading as well. And the verification uh, is different for different failure mode. Okay, for the steel failure, uh, on the top of your screen, this is the verification requirement for uh, steel failure, and that includes uh, channel lip and uh, the uh, flexor failure of the channel. Uh, equation is there. The bottom equation is for the verification of steel failure, including uh, the fracture of the anchor and the fracture of connection between anchor and a channel. So the factor K13, K14, they need to be taken from uh, a pre qualification report. Uh, generally, the value would be two or around but they need to be verified uh, or to be taken from the Euro code, uh, sorry, uh, ETA, the pre-qualification report. So the verification equation, if you compare them with uh, Euro code two part four, they are different. This is not typo, yeah, we intentionally make it different because from the research, we have found that the verification requirement given in the uh, Euro code two part four, are, they are overly conservative and, and some modification has been uh, made to consider that over conservative uh, thing. And finally, for the concrete related failure mode, the failure mode not included in the previous slide, we use this uh, verification uh, method to verify them in that direction. So uh, to calculate the single capacity of anchor channel, we need to calculate all the 10 tensile capacities, 10 shear capacities in X direction, sorry, nine shear capacities in X direction and nine shear capacities in Y direction. Okay, so if you add them together, you need to have 28 capacities to design an anchor channel for the single loading. So if there are multiple loading, you might need to do principal or superposition depending on the uh, the variation you have, and there might be some complexities and the, the, the design process could be very complex. So to help you with that, all the suppliers has uh, uh, the their own design software. So if a manufacturer supplies anchor channel, they will have, or they already have an anchor channel, sorry, the software that will be able to design the anchor channel. So for the design of steel structure or concrete structure, there are generic uh, software, for example, if you are using space gas or um, Abacus or SAP, ETFs, whatever you use, they can be used to design this building and this building and this building. So this is common, generic software. But for anchor channel, that doesn't apply. If you are using anchor channel from manufacturer A, you need to use the software developed by that manufacturer. Why? Because the design parameter and design capacities factor, they are product dependent. So same factor could be different for manufacturer A's anchor channel and manufacturer B's anchor channel. And this variation needs to be included in the uh, software. So, the software are based on ETAs. So if manufacturer A has software, they will include the factors of the ETA or the pre-qualification report of all the anchor channel they uh, produce. That means you can use that software to design their products. So I've given the, the screenshot of two design software uh, that are available in Australian market. The first one is from the Leviat. If you are designing anchor channel uh, from Leviat, if you are using the anchor channel from Leviat, you should use the Leviat software. The second one is for the Hilti. If you want to use the Hilti anchor channel, you should be using the Hilti anchor design software. So again, do not mix and match. The software and the, manif uh, the, the product uh, should be uh, from the same manufacturer and the ETA, the pre-qualification report, should be embedded uh, in the design software. 
finally, the third critical component, the installation. Installation is very, very important. Uh, AFAC has installation uh, course, Jesse mentioned during the, uh, the introduction part, but we don't have any training or certification for anchor channel as yet. Uh, but we have prepared some some installation videos for those anchor channels. So if you go to the AFAC website, afac.org.au slash resources, we have those videos listed there and also you can find them in AFAC. So we have prepared the installation video for the Levy at anchor channel and we have prepared the installation videos for Hilti anchor channel. They are kind of about 15 to 20 minutes long, so I'm not going to play them here now due to the time limitations. But if 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 you are designing or it doesn't matter if you are not installing them, it, it's a good idea to go and have a look to identify where could go wrong and where you need to be a bit, bit, bit vigilant on. Uh, final topic, let's compare this with other international standards. So I'm uh, covering here European standard, the first one, the European uh, design method, second one, Australian design method, and third one is the American design method. So all those three design methods require pre-qualification uh, requirement. They need their uh, the product used and needs to be pre-qualified before using the design design process. So for the uh, European uh, requirement, uh, the pre-qualification needs to be done in accordance with EAD 33008. Uh, the design, uh, Eurocode 2 part 4 covers the N and V, Y direction. Uh, if you want to design uh, the VX direction, Eurocode 2 part 4 doesn't have the design requirement now. For that, you need to refer to the TR17080 in Europe. For the approval, ETA is the uh, proof of uh, fit for purpose or the proof of pre-qualification. In Australia, the pre-qualification needs to be done according uh, with Appendix A of that standard and Appendix A refers to the same EAD. So the pre-qualification method is similar in Europe and Australia. For the design, everything is covered in the single document AS5216-2021. And for the approval part, ETA is accepted. And also, if uh, someone has the pre-qualification report that is prepared in accordance with EAD 33008, it's acceptable as well. In USA, the design is not included completely in ACI 318. So there is a different document for pre-qualification and design, which is acceptance criteria AC232. And for the pre-qualification, uh, they require a, a ICC ESR evaluation service report. Depending on the requirement, there is a little bit difference in the limitation as well. Uh, for the uh, design and pre-qualification for N direction and the Y directions, uh, all three standards are kind of uh, similar in terms of limitation. There are differences in uh, some parameter in formulas uh, here and there, but the, the, the limitation is exactly the same. So there is no limitation in number of anchors and there is no limitations in the distribution of forces to individual anchors. But if you go to the uh, design for uh, VX, uh, the share loading in the longitudinal directions, there are few differences. So if you look at the number of anchor channels uh, or number of anchors in the channel, European method is limited to three or less. So if you have the anchor channel with four anchors, Eurocode 2 part 4 doesn't cover. So the maximum anchor channel they cover for the VX is number three. Three is the maximum number they allow. But there is no limitation in Australian and American design standard. AS5216 and AC232, they do not have any limitations in number of anchors. There is some limitations in the distribution. I'll talk that a little bit uh, now. So the limitation of the effectiveness of the distribution depends on the failure mode and the orientation of the anchor channel, I, as I mentioned before. So if uh, the anchor channel uh, you are considering uh, is uh, dominant on the steel failure or if you are verifying the steel failure, the load uh, distribution is uh, same for the all anchors. So there is there is there is no difference. So uh, load is applied to every anchor in the anchor channel. And if there is uh, the anchor channel uh, installed perpendicular to the edge, the Europeans, they apply all the channel load uh, to the single anchor that is closest to the edge, and which is again very conservative. 
an Australian and American design method. They distribute the load to three anchors that is closest to the edge uh, that will produce the worst design scenario. So European, just one, Australian and American, they divide it into the three three anchors. And similar in the case of uh, the parallel uh, installation or um, parallel to the A's. So in Europe, they divide into the three anchors. If there are three or less, uh, and they, they do not allow four anchors, so either two or three. And the Australian and American design method, again, there is no limitation in number of anchors, so they divide the load to the three anchor that will produce the worst design scenario. So not all the three design standards are same. And I'll conclude with this final slide with the three critical elements, pre-qualification. So the product needs to be independently tested and assessed, and we need the pre-qualification report to design the uh, fastness. And in Australia, the pre-qualification needs to be done in accordance with the EAD 33008. Design again, we need to consider all possible loading condition, all possible failure mode, and we need to verify for all those failure mode for anchor channel, there are 28 as I went through them. And all those requirement and calculation methods, everything is covered in 2021 edition of AS5216. And for the installation, AS5216 assumes that the installation is done by the qualified person who should know what he's doing. Okay, this is the three critical element uh, you should uh, follow for the quality uh, assurance for, uh, to get the good quality connection. And this is my last slide and I would be uh, happy to answer if you have, have any questions.